station. A pool starts off with 300 liters of water and is being filled at a rate of 25 liters per minute. Let W represent the amount of water in the pool after T minutes of filling it with additional water from, I guess, the 300 it started with. Write and graph an equation to represent the situation. So it's a two-part problem. For the first part, we're told to let W represent the amount of water. So I'll put a W here. Equals, well, how much water was there to begin with in the problem? To begin with, there was 300 liters before I even started doing anything. So 300. It's being filled, and how fast is it being filled? How much are you adding in? Well, you're adding in 25 liters, but that's per minute. And how many minutes is it running for? Well, that's given as T. So W equals 300 plus 25T is the equation that represents this situation. So now to graph, we typically only need first quadrant for most of the, for a lot of these kind of applied problems. So this is actually written kind of in the form y equals mx plus b. It's clearly a line, right? So what would happen if we were to replace the t with 0? So let's make this my t axis down here and my w axis here. If I were to replace t with 0, we get 300 plus 25 times 0, which is 300. So along the w axis, I'm going to go up to a point here, and we're going to plot the point 0, comma, 300. Then, what would happen if we filled the pool for just one minute? Well, replacing t for 1 into the original equation that we found, we'd have 300 plus 25 times 1, which would be 325. So I'd go out here 1, and I'd go up to 325, and I would plot a point at 1, 325. So that would mean that the line that models this situation would look something like going through those two points, and it would be a line going upward. There we go. And that's the final answer. So why don't you try this other applied problem on your own? Suppose I live 240 kilometers from my friend's house. I start driving toward their house at 80 kilometers an hour. Let D be the distance that I still need to travel after I've been going for T hours. I guess I'm driving, so I'm not driving a bike. So let's go hours of biking, hours of driving. Write and graph an equation to represent this situation. OK, this time I'm using the variable d to represent the distance I have left to go. So at the beginning, how much distance did I have to go? Looks like 240. As I drive, I'm losing the distance that I have to go, right? It's going to be less distance. I'm getting closer to the, my friend's house. So I'm going to be subtracting off some number of kilometers. How many kilometers? Well, you kind of wish it was 80. It's not quite 80, right? It's 80 per hour. And how many hours was I uh, driving for? It looks like I was driving for t many hours. So there we go. We have distance left to go equals 240 minus 80t. So again, like before, let's make a first quadrant graph so I can start to plot in some of the information. And over here, I'll make a quick little t table and notice that if I've traveled for zero hours I'm still at home I will have to go 240 more kilometers and if I travel for one hour let's see 80 times 1 is 80 and 240 minus 80 is 160 so when I come over to my graph I got t down here and d over here when I'm at zero I have 240 to go and after 1 I only have 160 left to go so this time it looks like my line is 
it's still a line, and this time it's going to be sloping in a downward direction. For example, I'm going to eventually get to my friend's house uh, after a certain number of hours. I bet you it's three hours, but we have a model here that takes the word problem, makes a model, and then graphs it so that way we can use both of those to help us answer additional questions.